Welcome back to Road to Fire. We're a family of three documenting our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. Let's chat about our August 2021 budget. I will share a quick July budget recap and outline our household expenses and income for this month with all real numbers like always, so please hang with me. Now, August will be our lowest income month yet. And when I say income, I mean take home pay or net pay after all deductions. But this is by design, kind of. I really wish we had a more consistent income each month. Over this year alone, our income has fluctuated so much from upwards to $15,000 to just over $13,000 a month. These swings don't make it harder to budget, but it does require us to make shifts and changes within each individual line items in our budget. By no means am I complaining. We are taking all the right steps to make our dollars stretch in every way possible to stay on track for FIRE. But if you're new here, we are not your typical FIRE journeyer. We are not eating rice and beans every day, we don't live on our bare bones budget month over month, and we don't skip out on things we love to do. We travel, we go to concerts, we eat out maybe too much, we love museums and family picnics, and we splurge on our little one in ways others might find frivolous. But what we've learned when it comes to budgeting, we cut out the things that don't matter to us and focus on the things that do. You can really tell a lot about somebody when you look at their budget. In fact, here's an example. So this is a high level July budget recap. I started doing this last month and got good feedback, so I'll keep doing it in all of my budget videos. Now I don't do budget closeout as the budget videos take a lot of time, so I think this is a good middle ground. In these recaps, I capture a few line items in my last month's budget that was off based on our budget to one, show that we're not perfect, and to two, highlight how we manage budget changes throughout the month. A budget is a guideline or roadmap, and it's always fluid. First is restaurants. We plan to spend about $300 for our family of three and we actually spent $455. Now, this is a bit inflated as we decided to cash flow our DC expenses within our budget versus using our sinking funds. I do this quite a lot. I rarely touch my sinking funds unless our budget is really lopsided. So although it seems like we spent a lot on eating out, it was mostly in DC during our Independence Day trip. So number two is giving, and I love giving. I had a lot of birthdays and anniversaries happen in August, so I started buying things a month earlier that was not planned for, mainly for my son who turns four within a few days. I got him a big boy bike that cost a pretty penny and a new lunchbox, which was about $158, definitely over budget here. Car payment was planned to send about $1,200, which is about $500 over our monthly payments, but life happened. I really focused on sending more to savings last month, which means debt became secondary. I'm hoping to pick this back up once we get our new house and I can focus on our debt payment journey a little bit better moving forward. And household. I will say that we've come a long way with this line item. Since I no longer have Prime, we have cut this budget line by more than 70%. We budgeted $100, but I had our maintenance man come in to finish a few interior projects, which cost us a little bit more than we expected but our unit is finally ready for showing, so we were definitely over budget on this line item. Overall, July ended up about on par. We had a surprise income increase from the child tax credit, which I will touch base in a second, and affiliated marketing, which combined had over $600 that was not planned. That definitely helped offset these red light items in our budget. So I always share this, but our budget steps have not changed, but I love to outline it just to show how easy budgeting really is, at least for us. We only have three steps. My husband and I use a joint Capital One card and I have a link to the card below if you're interested. And we use that for nearly all of our expenses. Again, a few companies prefer direct checking account payments versus credit cards, so those are the exceptions in our budget. Next, we automate all of our savings. We make slight adjustments month over month as our income fluctuates, but almost all of our investing transactions are automatically set for the year. And lastly, we have bi-weekly check-ins just to help us stay on track for the remainder of the month and make adjustments as needed. I do finally have a free budget sheet in the description box below. It is formulated in Google Sheets, but works perfectly in Excel. Keep in mind it's a template and is meant to be edited and adjusted to fit your own needs. But check it out below in the description box. So let's review our projected income for the month of August. I can't believe it's August already, which is basically birthday month for half of my family. Our passive income has continued to be steady, but was a slight decline versus last month due to a lower than expected income from YouTube. But that's expected as YouTube is never consistent. We are going to list our unit this month, so hopefully we can get a tenant before the winter so we can start cash flowing this property. But that is all contingent on us finding a new home in time, literally a domino effect. And my husband's 401k contributions were increased once again as I did the math wrong last period. 
So that's also attributed to a lower than expected income for August, but that's okay. We have all of our income in our budget, but we're hoping to separate our rental business income out from personal before the end of this year. But right now it makes sense as we are currently house hacking. So here's our August income report. Our W-2 is still at around 83% of our income, and that's about on par from where we've been throughout this year. Some months have been higher or a bit lower, but we're usually around the 80 percentile. I would love to see this drop to about 50% as our other streams of income continues to pick up, but that's a long-term pipeline dream. But here are the details. Our W-2 income is around $10,924, and this is representing after 401k and HSA contributions. This is down about $300 from last month due to adjusting my husband's 401k contributions, but we are definitely on track to hitting this goal for both of us. We have an other line item this month, and that's for the child care or the child tax credit. I'm actually surprised to see that we're getting anything. Every calculator online said we wouldn't. If I would have known, I would have opted out, but here it is here, $167 from the government every month throughout the end of the year. Our passive income for this month includes YouTube from July, our rental income, and a few other smaller sources such as cashback, affiliated marketing, and Ibotta. This month is expected to be around $1,825, which is about $700 down from last month, heavily driven by the YouTube income fluctuating month to month. Now, side hustle income will stay at $200 as I tend to be around that month over month, and that's expected to be the same for this month. So our total expected income for August will be $13,116, which is about $700 lower than last month, driven by YouTube, and that's okay overall. Now let's jump into our expected expenses for August. We have a lot of birthdays, anniversaries, and a wedding happening, so our budget will look a bit different than normal. But I am excited for all the family fun in August. I don't mind blessing others with gifts and my time. Now our debt-free journey has slowed on once again as we are racking up as much cash as we can for our next home buy. Now I don't think we'll leave this year debt-free, which is a bummer, but I can definitely hope. Really trying to position myself to get a promotion or at least a solid raise early next year to help increase our income to kind of offset some of this debt-free journey slowdown. But let's jump into it. So here's our August expense report or our detailed budget. Our top five categories never change, but there are adjustments in our all other section that is definitely new for this month. So our savings rate this month is planned to be around 43%, which is about the same from last month, but lower than our annual target. We are investing way less this month at only 5% of our after-tax dollars into our after-tax brokerage account, while the majority will go into our cash savings accounts, mainly for the house we plan to buy. Overall, our total expenses are just over $13,000 with about a $50 buffer from our income. So let's get into the details. This month, we plan to save $5,600, down $300 from last month, but still solid overall. Our mortgage is the same month over month. It includes everything from taxes to PMI, and that is fixed at $1,965. We always believe in tithing and giving back to others. This does not change as well. We will be sending $1,312, or 10% of our income to our church and charities within our community. One day though, we hope to send a larger percentage. Next is childcare expenses, which is at $1,248, and that is lower this month as my son is transitioning into a new pre-K program. So he has about a week off from the transition between the old school and the new school, but I just can't believe he's now in pre-K. Next is our last car loan, which is a bit of a bummer this month as we'll be only sending about $700 to the debt. If I can make more money on side hustles, this can hopefully increase, but right now we only have $700 planned. Now, our next expenses account for only 17% of our income, but are the most variable. So for travel, I'm going to Alaska in September with a girlfriend, so I expect to pay for Airbnbs and excursions this month, and that's around $350. And both groceries and restaurants are fixed at $300 each. I do not want to increase our restaurant budget as I'm still trying to rein us in. But I will say that once the winter comes, we tend to eat out way less as it's almost a crime to force a delivery driver to drive in 14 inches of snow. And car gas stays at about $210 as we always tend to be just under month over month. My husband's work schedule is changing, so I think we might be able to decrease this a bit, but we'll see it at the end of this month. Utilities are back down to about $228 as our trash and water bill was covered last month and is paid out quarterly. This includes heat, electricity, phone, and our internet bill. Gifts is new this month. I have four birthdays, a wedding, and a few anniversaries. I budgeted $200 as kids' gifts are easy, but this is definitely cutting it close. 
Car maintenance is at $150 and that's because our plates expired so we need to update that. Entertainment includes Netflix subscription, fun money for my husband and I to spend on anything we want, and YouTube TV for the Summer Olympics. We will definitely cut it out by the end of this month. And household items include the same, toiletries, cleaning supplies, hand soap, or anything else we may need for the house. This is fixed at $130, similar from last month. Now, personal care is new as I'm actually in the wedding, so I have to get beautified and that includes nails and hair. I might go over on this as I haven't done either in years, so I have no clue how much this costs these days. Business expenses usually fixed from last month at $80 and that includes the two subscriptions for my channel and my husband's hosting fees as well. Now I've learned to keep at least $50 for apparel in our budget as kids grow too fast. So total expenses for August is around $13,068. I hope we can hit this month's budget but some items are definitely a stretch but we'll adjust and change as needed throughout the month. So here's our 2021 after tax savings rate tracker. I share this every single month. Our target remains the same, but I am not bugging about this number. In fact, it's probably the one financial metric where I don't track it religiously. I have not closed out July yet, but we plan to be just over 42% as our savings rate and expect August to be about the same. Right now, we're averaging about 46.1%, which is lower than our target, but still makes it possible for us to potentially hit our goal by the end of this year. We'll have to see how August fares out. Last month, we hit only one of our four financial goals. We sent over $2,000 to our savings account, and that's about it. We did have stretch goals, but I just missed out on our YouTube earning target and our savings rate target, so those were the other two goals that I thought I was probably going to hit, but I end up not. This month, we got simpler goals. First is to put an offer on a house. A market has slowed down drastically in our area, so I'm excited about this. Number two is potentially prepay some September bills. I would love to get a month ahead on our bills in the future, so working to start paying some bills earlier. Number three is the same from last month. It's to declutter 25 items. We have started to get rid of things and hope of moving soon, so we'll see if we can potentially hit this this month. And the last goal is to read one financial book. I have been reading everything but not financial books, so I need to get back on it. So far this year, I've read about 22 books physical books and that's better than I expected. Now I don't think I have ever hit all four monthly goals this year but that's okay. It's all about the effort in the end. So the main goal is to buy a primary residence or at least be close to buying one in August. Waiting is the hard part. Because our market has slowed down substantially I'm thinking maybe we hold off for just a bit longer to get a better deal. But it's hard as you don't want a tenant to start a lease in the middle of winter as most people don't want to move then for obvious reasons. My husband is the patient one and if I was not married to him, I'm sure I would have rushed into buying a home already. Plan B would be to move into a temporary location, but that just screams fees and unnecessary costs for me. And no, I will not be moving back in with my parents. Kudos to those who can, but it is definitely a hard no for us. The one thing I'm most excited about is no longer being on a busy street. You can't imagine how hard it is to record a video when you live off of a busy street. This one slide has taken about four to five tries because everyone is apparently commuting at the same time whenever I record. But I'm looking forward to the silent days and nights in our new home. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.